Sounds good, but I'm just doing All right, here we go. Hello, everyone. This is Mick Orlowski here at Kamovitz HQ. I'm the uh, only one in the office. I've come into the office just to do this stream. Uh, the rest of us are all working from home. And uh, yeah, that does not stop Workflow Wednesday. Um, I know we're all uh, at home and a lot of our um, gigs have been postponed, put off, or, or even canceled in some cases. But it's, uh, So we're all spending a lot of time at home. And it's a good time to maybe think about some... Uh, Think about your strategy, your workflow, and in this case, we're going to talk about backups. And I'm going to bring in here uh, a special guest, uh, one of our very good friends of Camera Bits. His name is Jeff Cable. He's a professional photographer based in San Francisco. Uh, he's been a longtime sports shooter. Um, he shoots for the U.S. Olympic Committee. Um, he teaches workshops around the world, and he also does an amazing blog at jeffcable.com, and his website features free classes. So let's bring him in here on meeting. All right, there we go. Hello, Jeff. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm hanging in there. You know, as as much as good as can be expected, I guess, with the current situation that we're all in. So, yeah, it's uh, it is weird. Uh, we're all uh, adjusting to it. It's a whole new new world. But um, you know, uh, you know, I know you as an Olympic photographer certainly have had your summer thrown into complete you know, chaos. Um, have they definitely? Have they, I mean, they've they've as of now they said it, they're going to do it just next year. Do you do you think that's probably realistic or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. they've got uh, they've already got it scheduled. I've, I've got a ton of emails in my inbox from the USOC, the IOC, Olympic housing, uh, a little bit of everything right now and. They're set for July 23rd of next year. I think it will happen. Um, it better happen. God, if we're not back to normal by a year from now, a uh, year and a couple months, boy, that'd be brutal. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the, the, it's tough. I mean, uh, you know, after year, two years of planning on my part, both, you know, from security clearances, credentials, flights, housing, all the logistics, scheduling, uh, turning down other business, Mm -hmm. um, during that time, and now everything's thrown into a giant curve. So, and on top of everything else, uh, I had uh, trips planned for for next year to um, to Botswana and Tanzania, starting July twenty fourth. Oh. That's not going to happen. So, so now I've already had to cancel. Well, all of my events. Uh, I, I, would, I had a full schedule for March, April, and May every weekend shooting. Those are all gone, of course, in June. I'll be gone. Uh, had trips to Costa Rica uh, for May and a uh, trip to Scotland and Ireland in June. And all of that it will get scrubbed as well, probably. So it's um, it, it's a tough time um, you know, for business. Uh, I'm lucky in that um, you know, I do this because I love doing it. I mean, I, I do like making the money, but... You know, I do have a savings account. I feel sorry for all the people who are new to this business who don't. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I'm in a better situation than many, but, uh, you know, it's going to be tough. I mean, right now what I'm doing is um, staying at home, obviously, like everybody else. But uh, I've got a lot of clients who I've shot for over the years who've never once picked an image, which is mm -hmm. crazy. So uh, I am living in photo mechanic right now and Photoshop, and I am just literally retouching I'm, I'm reaching out to all those clients and saying like hey now's a good time you're stuck at home and you got your kids at home whatever pick your images from your bar mitzvah or your wedding or whatever and let's get these done so you know that is revenue coming in because i only charge for what i shoot so you know i can still get some money coming in um but the long-term effect is yeah it's tough really hard yeah that's uh, our hearts do definitely go out to a lot of the people affected by this. Uh, I mean, I, I, I do believe that we will get back to uh, some form of normal, more no, normality at some point, but it will take some time and it, it will uh, involve a lot of sacrifice from, from a lot of us. Yep. No, we'll, we'll get there. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist. I always look at the, I try to always look at the positive side. I guess this time is when I get down, but I mean, right now, um, you know, it's more time with, with the family. Uh, I got my, our daughter who works for Intel up by you and, uh, in Oregon and she's back home right now because she can't obviously she can't work at, uh, at the office um, she also has immune compromise so we'd rather have her home she has Crohn's disease so we've got her home and you know we're binge watching Netflix uh, we're uh, playing cards we're 
um, going for a lot of walks. I've been walking like eight miles a day, oh, every day. Um, I, walk, I always walk a lot anyway. But of course, um, now it's that and then just stay home. And, and like I said, trying to get some work done and trying to get organized. I'm learning you know, new things or trying to change workflow a little bit just to see you know, things I didn't have time to do before. Mm -hmm. So, I know. think, and I think definitely backups and backing up your photos is that falls into that category for a lot of people. They're like, yeah, I know I need to do backups, but uh, maybe when I get some time and you now maybe you might have some time. So I thought we could chat a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, people always think about backup the wrong time, right? Because generally, most of the time, people think about backup, it's when they've lost data and um, you know, they have a hard drive failure and then they panic. And that's when they think, okay, well, now I got to back up. And that's, of course, that's the, the wrong way to do it. I mean, look, we've all been there. Um, I, I'm lucky, knock on wood, I've never lost an image yet. Um, but, I mean, uh, I used to, I, I've changed how I back up over the years, and we could talk a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for me, it is um, just how I fine-tune the process to not only make sure that that I've got the um, the process working here in the home studio, but also getting those images offsite. And that's critical. Yeah, I think uh, that's what they said. You definitely want to have something on site and off site as well. Like you can't have everything in one location. Yeah, I mean, I talked to a lot of you know photographers or you know just people that are at home, and they say, "Oh, yeah, it's great. I've got everything backed up." And I said, "Well, where's it backed up?" And they, "Oh, it's right here," and then back there. And I'm like, "If you have a fire, and you know we're in earthquake territory here, you know." God forbid, you have some major catastrophe. Um, you know, I don't want to have to say to my clients, gee, sorry, I lost all your images. Um, I, for peace of mind, I want to know that everything's backed up maybe multiple times here, but also uh, not here, somewhere far away. And I used to have things backed up, and we could talk about how I do that with my Drobos. Um, I used to have everything backed up about a half mile or a mile from my house here which is great because I get through any issues. I could drive over and check the remote server. But of course, after the Sonoma fires and the Paradise fires in California, where it wiped out the entire towns, I was like, okay, a mile or a half mile is not safe enough. So now my remote server is about 200 miles from here um, at my brother's house in Sacramento. So yeah, let's uh, let's go through just your basic then a process after a shoot. Like what what's what's that look like? Mayhem. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I shoot, um, so uh, my process is is different than a lot of people in that I always want to post next day, and generally I like to post before lunchtime even. So when I shoot an event, um, I do I go through. So first thing I do. Um, when I shoot, I, sh uh, I shoot everything right now. I'm shooting on the 1DX Mark III, um, and I'm shooting to uh, very fast memory cards. These are CF Express cards. Um, and I also have um, Thunderbolt Reader here on my Mac. And so everything's fast. I can download the entire shoot, even if it's 30 or 40 gig in like a minute or two. It's very, very fast. And then the first thing I do is I go through Photo Mechanic. And I shoot a lot. So um, if I'm doing a family portrait, I might shoot five, six, seven, eight of one grouping. Uh, and I'm looking for that one shot where everything's right. And then, so I can get rid of half of them. If they're either out of focus or someone's looking the wrong way or eyes were closed or whatever, I'm looking for that one really nice shot. Or I might keep two. So I'll go through and I'll, I'll make a pass. And my process is to tag. So I hit the T on all the images that are either out of focus um, you know, if it's dancing at the party and, you know, dancing, you can make people look really good or really bad. And if this, you know, if it's not a good image of someone or there's someone picking their nose in the background or whatever, I'll, I'll you know, delete those. So I tag all the ones that are um, not of interest to me uh, to keep Then I go select tagged and delete. So now I've got my keepers, if you will. So I make another pass now and I rank them. And so um, I'll rank the ones that I want to show the client and the ones that I don't. So I'll go through and say, oh, this is a great one. This is a good one. This is a good one. And generally in photo mechanic, as you know, you can rank them one through nine or one through zero. And I will do generally the ones I want to show the client that will be marked a four. And then uh, if it's a really great shot, it might be a three. 
Um, if it's an absolute money shot, like one of my favorite shots I've ever taken, I might rank it a two. And so, but generally most of them are fours and threes. And then once I'm done and I've edited, then I'll make it a one, which is the pink or purple, whatever you want to call it, um, lavender. <laughs> uh, but so generally most of the things get ranked as a four. And then what I'll do is I'll go through the whole collection of images and then turn off anything that's not ranked. And then I select all, I save those as uh, a smaller JPEG to upload to my web gallery, which is on Zenfolio. Um, and then that gets watermarked there and sent off to the client. I also will edit, you know, maybe five or 10 of my favorite images um, uh, for the client and, and put my watermark on it and send it to them so they can put it on social media because you, you know they want to do that. Better my images with a watermark than crappy iPhone shots or whatever. So, and generally, so once I get done doing the uh, deleting and then the ranking, and then once I've gotten them to my client, then, then what I'll do is I'll, those are all sitting on, those are downloaded to my Drobo 8D that's sitting here on this machine. So this computer I'm working on right now, I just switched over. I used to have the Mac 2013 uh, Mac Pro cylinder or what they call the ashtray. <laughs> um, I got rid of that. And uh, believe it or not, I'm actually working on a MacBook Pro 16 inch laptop as my desktop. Um, and so I've got a uh, 32 inch 4K monitor hooked up to it. Um, and the, and the Drobo 8D. So everything resides on the Drobo. Once I'm done and get everything cold and ranked, then those get copied from the Drobo 8D to the Drobo A10N, which is over behind the uh, other computer on this side. There's an iMac over here, and behind the iMac is, a, is another Drobo. And um, the, that's a Drobo A10M, which is a NAS drive. Um, what's really cool about that is that now I've got it redundant here at the house, at the home office. But the Drobo 810N that's here, there's another Drobo 810N that as I mentioned earlier is in Sacramento. And, and this one is, so Drobo has a software called Drobo DR um, for it's basically a remote connection. And so it data transfers everything every night. I've got it set for every night at 11 o'clock. And every night at 11, it uploads all the images to my brothers, uh, to the duplicate server. And now the, they're there and, and it used to take you know, eight, 10 hours to do when I had a slow internet. I just switched to fiber optic here at the house. And uh, I went from about 10 megabits per second up to 900, I think it is. So what used to take, you know, 12 hours now takes 20 minutes. It's amazing. So now, the, you know, once I move them to that server, by midnight, that same night that I shot the event, everything is remotely backed up. It's awesome. Yeah, that is cool. Uh, we had a question in the comments. David wanted to know if you used, um, when you do any of the redundant uh, forking the data, when you do your ingest, or do you wait till after you do your selections to do the that backup? Uh, say that one more time, sorry. I'm gonna turn off my mail because I keep getting all these dings here. Hold on here. Sure. Kill that. All right, so what were we saying? Say it one more time. Um, he wanted to know if you do any backing up like during the ingest, like, or do you wait till after you do your selects? Yeah, I don't. Um, I know that you can, like you can download to multiple uh, locations. I don't. Um, and the reason is because I want to make that first pass and tag all the stuff I don't need or don't want. Mm -hmm. um, again, if it's a reasonably good image, let's say it's the family portrait and I took 10, I'll keep more than one. Um, but if they're out of focus or someone's not looking good, or if it's a portrait of two people and one person has their eyes closed and I've got six others that are good, yeah, like I said, I'll, I want to get rid of those. There's no reason to keep those. And there's no reason to have that. Even though hard drives are cheap, there's no reason for me to keep those. So what I'll do is I want to make those passes. And I also like to have them ranked before I back up remotely, because that way, again, if something were to happen, I know that what's sitting up on the server in Sacramento, on the redundant server, has already been ranked, which makes my life easier. God forbid I need to work off that drive as a, because something major happened here locally. And uh, David also asked about your uh, your ranking. You, you were talking about the uh, the ratings. I believe you use the color labels. You said I do use the color labels. I don't use the stars very often. Um, one of the reasons I do that is it's much more apparent as I'm looking through um, you know in the catalog or the you know the browser of all the images. Um, it's really easy for me to see what's been ranked and what isn't. If it's got a bright color versus nothing, the stars to me are harder to find. Mm -hmm. um, Although, as you know, we were talking uh, in Vegas at WPPI 
and came up with that way to load selection or save selection or load selection. So I actually just started kind of playing with that a little bit and using stars for that. Um, for and that's a whole another thing we could talk about later. But but um, I, I I find that the stars are too hard to visually see versus the color coding. Mm -hmm. So I do use the color coding for that reason. Yeah. And after you do your nightly backups, that's all automated. You don't have to like kick that off. That's just scheduled through the Drobo software, correct? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, again, here's one of the things. So here, let me talk about what I used to do. What I used to do, and I've got one somewhere around here. Um, I've got a, I used to keep the external drives, like some Western digital, my book drives or whatever they call them. And they'd be like 12 terabyte drives. And what I would do is I'd have like, you know, 2000 to 2010 on one drive and then 2010 to 2016 on another drive. And so the latest drive, and then I have that somewhere at a friend's house in a safe. And then the, the most recent drive, I would kind of go grab every three months and back up. But you know how that goes. I mean, sometimes it would be a month, sometimes it'd be four months. And so there was a lot of latency in between me remembering to back up. And so that just um, is dangerous in that I don't want four months of work that's not remotely backed up. So when um, I've, I've been using Drobo for a long time and I had the NAS drive here, I just didn't know you could do the redundancy. And so in my one of my discussions or maybe there's something online that I saw, I'm like, wait a second, this is something I can automate. So yes, it's not the cheapest thing to do, but boy, I'll tell you what, the fact that to your point, I don't have to even think about it. I know that every night at 11, anything that's on that drive gets sent, uh, you know, and duplicated. So it might be iTunes music, it could be Word docs, it, you know, anything. Um, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. So it, the fact that it's done, and um, you know, I do check it every week or so to make sure that, you know, it's actually still working and there's not any hiccups. Um, and, uh, you know, but it just, it does, it works. Once in a while, I'll ping uh, my brother or I'll, I'll log in his computer through something like TeamViewer and I'll look to make sure that all the data is there. But I mean, the Drobo software shows me, okay, I just transferred, you know, 38 gigabytes or whatever. So I know it's going. And that's a, um, an incremental backup. Like if you just change one image, it's not gonna send the whole thing. Right, and I, it's kind of weird. I don't use any, I, if, if I were to do this to start all over again, I would have used backup software that would, you know, move any Delta changes. Right now I do it just through the finder and I just drag over that folder. The only bad thing about that is, uh, like right now, as I mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm actually editing images for clients. And um, so when I go back to a folder from last year, five years ago, and I edit their images, I forget to add those to the NAS drive. So those are not getting backed up. Um, so if I had used incrementals, if I'd used software to do that for me, mm -hmm. it would know that those Delta has changed and moved it. So I would change that. Now it's too late though, because for me to try to resynchronize the the terabytes of data that I've got, it would I'd have to bring that server back here locally and redo the whole sync and, and it's not worth it to me. And then honestly, at the very worst case, uh, a client were to come back to me um, three years from now and say, hey, uh, you edited those images for us and we lost them. And I had a fire at the house. And so I'm working off the remote server. I'd have to re-edit and take me, you know, maybe four hours to re-edit images. The odds of that happening, though, are so slim that mm -hmm. that I take a chance. And it, when you do have to go back to, say, the remote, or if you did, is that something that the Drobo software just lets you go in and grab it, or like how do you, how do you can you search that drive remotely? So um, right now with the Drobo software, it doesn't. So they have something called Drobo Access, which lets me ping into. Uh, the the NAS drive here and um, and access it, which is really cool because when I'm traveling out of the country and I get a print order, I can actually upload the images to wherever I am from here and take those images, edit them, and then just like either I could probably have printed through like Bay Photo and have a drop ship right to the client. I've done that before. Um, but unfortunately, I think right now the way it's set up with Drobo DR, because that remote NAS drive is only set up as a sync drive i don't believe i can also access it through their software that may change in the future but right now i can't but again i check in through team viewer i can take control of my brother's machine and kind of at least check it 
Um, so I can access this one. And God forbid, if there was major catastrophe here, I would have to drive up and grab that drive. You know, I'd have to physically bring that one back here. And that would be my, my new data source. Makes sense. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would definitely interested to know is like, so how does this all work when you are remote? Like if you're in Tokyo shooting a, uh, some, some water polo or a, a, like how, you know, what do you do on the road for this kind of backing up or making sure everything's safe? Yeah, I've got a couple of things I do. Um, so in the past, I haven't uh, written very many images directly to the Drobo here at the house when I'm somewhere remote. But it's like when I'm shooting in Africa, teaching a photo tour out there, the internet's too slow to do that. Um, now in the Olympics, um, it's different because we've got super, super fast connecting speed. So it's possible that I can write, and I do send my favorite images that are retouched to the to the Drobo here at the house. I also use Dropbox in combination. So I use I also use Dropbox because that's just so easy to to upload to, where I can you know have it on my laptop at the Olympics and wherever I put that folder just kind of syncs whenever I'm connected. So their software is really you know simple to use and they get kind of like the Drobo DR. It's brainless. It just works. So I use kind of Dropbox to deliver images to clients. I use Dropbox for having stuff in the cloud, and then I do. Um, throw stuff onto my Drobo here at the house. And also, if you look behind me, there's the digital picture frame here. Um, that's the new uh, Netgear uh, mural frame. And I can actually remotely upload to that, which is pretty cool. So um, I can send images from wherever I am to the frame over here. So I do do stuff like that. Um, but uh, most of the time, it's going to Dropbox. And then I also back up, I've got tons of solid state drives. Like I've got the SSD here and I carry at least two of these with me. When I do the Olympics, I've got three or four and I've got like one in each locker, one at my hotel room, one in my bag all the time. And I'm backing up to many locations. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do they do like when you send images, like how are they at, like they don't lose images when if you send them off to uh, the USOC or something, they're, they're pretty good at uh, keeping track of those, right? Oh yeah, yeah. They've got um, they've got asset man data asset management systems for images, but um, you know, generally when I deliver to them, I actually deliver through Dropbox. So I've got a Dropbox created for each team, or you know, for let's say for USA water polo or USA hockey in the winter or whatever. And then what I do is I'll take those and um, and drag them into their folder, or actually I pre-write the script inside of Photo Mechanic so that it uh, when I hit save it will automatically save it. Let's say the team wants the images at 1800 pixels. So I'll, I'll pre-write it so that it will save it to 1800 pixels, no watermark and save it to, uh, and before I shoot, let's say it's USA versus Russia hockey game. So I'll pre-create the folder in Dropbox and I'll pre-write the script inside, or not the script, but the actual command inside of Photo Mechanic to resize it to 1800 pixels and to save it into a folder inside USA Hockey's folder called USA versus Russia with the date and all that. So that when the game actually happens and I and I have a 15 minute deadline to get those taken care of, I can just hit Command S and I know that it's sending to the right folder. So yeah, it's all automated in that respect. Nice. Uh, David in the comment stream asked the, who makes that frame? I think you said Netgear was the... Yeah, Netgear, believe it or not, makes it. Um, it's called the Netgear Mural. Uh, I'm about to do a blog. so. If you read the blog, which is just blog.jeffcable.com, <coughs> excuse me, that's not coronavirus, it's just a cough. Um, um, if you read the blog, it should be out tomorrow, and uh, I'm going to blog about it. It's it's really cool. It's a, it's a good frame. The quality looks really good. So, yeah. I think it looks good from here. M-E-U-R-A-L, mural. So, yeah, I, I should just... mention also, sorry, um, when I do get back from the Olympics, the first thing I do is when I have everything, like when I'm on the flight on the way home, I will do one final backup of everything to one SSD. Um, and uh, and then that drive, the, like almost the minute I come home, even if I'm exhausted, this will get connected to the main computer, put onto this 8D, put onto the A10N, and, and it'll start syncing. And in the past, because I shoot so much at the Olympics, it might take five or six days to upload to the remote server. With the new fiber optic, it's probably going to take maybe a day or less. And is that, uh, that's a drag and drop or is it, is there anything like when you plug it in, you open up Finder and? 
Just go that route. Yeah, literally just open Finder, drag and drop. It's again, it's it's not a very automated system. Um, I may actually change that. I may starting in 2021, let's say, start a new folder uh, starting in 2021, and then use some kind of a backup uh, sync software from that point. We'll see. I haven't gotten there yet. And again, one of the things that as I have time sitting at home right now, I'm looking at researching a little bit more. And uh, yeah, so I was curious, we've talked a little bit about backups. What are the occasions that you do need to go back and find like an image from three or four years ago? Almost every, I mean, all the time. Uh, you know, I have so many clients who will uh, ping me. Um, well, as I mentioned, I've got clients who have never ordered. I've got clients who from, you know, literally five, six, seven, eight years ago, I shot for them, they paid me and they've never selected their images. So that I'm pinging them right now, like, hey, you know, now's your chance before your kid gets married to get their apartments for images or whatever. Um, but also I get a lot of time, you know, I'll have everything from, you know, a grandparent that passes away and the family will reach out to me and say, remember five years ago, you got a great shot of, you know, my mother or father and they passed away and we'd love to get an image. And of course I never charge for those. I go back, I find it, edit it, send it to them. Um, but uh, um, I'll even look back. Images from favorite trips, like right now, there's a lot of downtime. So I can go back and say, Let, let's look at shots from Costa Rica or Tanzania or something from, you know, three, four years ago. And, you know, and maybe I'll even re-edit some stuff because my editing skills are better than they were five, six years ago or whatever. So I go back all the time. And do you Very use um, basically just do it by date, or do you like how do you find something from three years ago? Do you just you know the date? Do you have to look up the date or keywords or? Um, not usually keywords yet. Uh, that's changing with with Photo Mechanic Six Plus. Um, so in the past, what I did is so my folder structure is year month day so it would be today is what uh, april 1st oh hell i could have told a joke about that but i did <laughs> um so it would be 2020 04 01 dash uh you know um bob and julie davis wedding with dashes in between i don't use spaces i use dashes so that would be the folder structure so the nice thing is because i do it by by year month date everything's chronological on my AD here. So I have every image I've ever taken from 1995 all the way till now. And so, but inside the photo mechanic, I would do a command O for open. I'll type in Davis and I'll, you know, find anybody I shot with the name Davis. And I can find almost any image within like seconds. I mean, it's, people are blown away, but I shot stuff 20 years ago. I can find it almost immediately. Now I do keyword. Um, and one of the frustrating things in the past is that I could never really search by those. With Photo Mechanic 6 Plus, which I am using the beta of right now, um, with the catalog, it's I, I was amazed because I get this all the time where people say to me, okay, have you ever shot at this particular venue before? And I realize, okay, I have. I don't remember what it looks like. Well, there's no way for me to go back and find that. With Photo Mechanic 6 Plus, because I put in the venue names where I shoot, I can say, find me every time I shot at this country club, and within seconds, every image that I, you know, that's got that name in there pops up. It's, I mean, that's a game changer for me. It is incredible how cool that is. So that allows me to, to have even more advanced capabilities than I've ever had before. So I'm dying for that to come on, let's go get that thing out. <laughs> yeah, we, we are working as fast as we can on that. That's photo mechanic plus. Uh, let's see. David also asked if you use any sort of file verification method to make sure, like after you do your backups, if the files are the same, uh, checksum or hashtag or I don't. Like hashing. Yeah, I don't. I don't use any checksums. Uh, I just assume that it works. Uh, the good thing about the server, so I, uh, not only am I moving the backup stuff to the server, but um, here at the house, when, uh, when I'm editing, like right now, I'm working on editing an event. When I get done with it, those images then go on to the, the NAS drive. And then my wife who builds all the albums, she can just grab all those off the NAS drive. So I'll email her and say, hey, images for Davis wedding are done and ready for your uh, to do album design. And so we just switched because again, we have free time right now. Um, we've been working on trying to switch from our old album design software to Fundy. And so, you know, we just didn't have time and now 
we switched over because my wife had time to actually start watching videos and and you know to learn and so that's a major switch we made in the last couple of weeks so i give her the email and say hey these images are ready and she'll go and grab them uh, and again i've never once had had her say gee these are corrupted or whatever i better knock on wood again but um i mean again with a drobo everything's been solid so uh, I, I haven't had any issues there yeah that's cool so you uh drobo do you have a particular like i know your memory cards you you told me in the past you yeah. prograde i'm using the prograde digital uh cards and uh somewhere around here i've got uh so i use their cards this is their the reader for cf express and sd um i've got these this this is a USB C. uh the other one that's on my computer right now is actually thunderbolt 3 which is cool um so i'm using and i'm using their card so my 1dx mark 3 that's sitting right here um I've got a one terabyte card in there and a half terabyte card. So the one terabyte card. So let's talk about backing up even in camera. Um, so let me grab that for a second. And I'll show you. Um, ah, so this is the the one DX Mark III. Pop that open. I've got two card slots. If you can get that for you here. And uh, in this this backup slot, I've got the one terabyte card. And uh, and then in the other slot. I've got the half terabyte card, but the one terabyte card that's in here stays in here. So basically it is uh, backing up or redundancy even in the camera. So I, as you know, I was in the memory card business for 12 years as director of marketing at Lexar. I know what can go wrong with memory cards. So even though these cards have been uh, foolproof for me, I always, always, always shoot two cards um, because I wanna make damn sure I've got my images. So that one terabyte card that's in there just basically stays in the camera. I never take it out. Um, and every couple of months I can reformat it. Um, but I always shoot raw files to both just for redundancy. It's like an in-camera SSD basically. Yeah, with, with, with the capacities that large, I mean, that's that's really changing the game. I can remember, you know, shooting 16 gig cards and I would have like eight. 16 gig, how about one gig, 16 right. meg cards. I've got, I've got some sitting here somewhere, wait. In my collection, I've got some old memory cards here somewhere. They're like 32 meg cards. I tried shooting to it. I tried to format one in the camera. It wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, let's check the comments here. Any questions? Uh, we have some recommendations for backup software. Carl recommends GoodSync, all one word. Uh, Andrew okay. recommends Carbon Copy Cloner. Uh, I've used Copy here in our Cloner. office, Carbon Copy Cloner. So that's that's been good for us. Yeah, I use it for cloning. Actually, I that's speaking of backup, one of the other things I'll do with the SSDs for the Olympics. So when I go to the Olympics, I don't worry about, I mean, I still worry about my camera equipment, but I don't worry about the camera equipment as much um, as I do my laptop because like in cer certain places like in Pyeongchang in Korea, I didn't know if there's even an Apple store within 100 miles or more. So Canon is there with their uh, professional services. So if I drop a camera or lens, they can loan me a new one within minutes. But so one of the things I really worry about most is my laptop. So I will take and I'll clone my drive onto, uh, onto one of the SSDs. And that way, if someone steals my laptop or I drop it or whatever, I can go buy a new one and then I'll use carbon copy cloner and I'll just move the entire drive back to the new Mac. And, and I do that really I only do that for the Olympics, but nice. It works. That, yeah, that reminds me of uh, some of your blogs from last from the Winter Olympics. I'm gonna miss that. As, uh, I mean, I'm gonna miss all the images and the sport events. But I think your blogs from the Olympics were also very, uh, very entertaining reading. Thank you. I you know, I mean, I try to you know share the experience of what it's like to be at the Olympics. I mean, I'm really bummed that we're not gonna be there in a couple months. I mean, I, obviously, as you know, I plan you know for the last two you know four years, we've been looking forward to it. Um, it's a one-year delay. I'll deal with it. It's going to be a challenge um, this time because the Summer Olympics is going to be over. And then six months later, I'll be flying to Beijing for the Winter Olympics. It's going to be crazy to have them that close together. Um, and it'll be exhausting in, in, in a certain way for us. But um, it'll be a challenge, but it'll be interesting. But I like to share what it's like to be at the Olympics, what it's like to you know, shoot the games. Obviously, I think there'll be a lot more interest this time because of what's happening. Um, you know, what are the changes? And, you know, it's going to be called the 2020, Tokyo 2020 Games, even though it would be 2021. And um, so there will be a lot of stuff that will be different. And I'll, and I'll probably do a blog uh, soon about 
what's happening behind the scenes. Like all our credentials are just being, we're already pre-approved. We don't have to reapply, but obviously all the housing, which I just got the email on today, which I haven't looked at yet, that's gonna have to get moved. I called United and they basically said, well, there's a $300 change fee. And I'm like, you know, I have to work on that. Now that may get changed, but you know, and of course I can't even book a ticket to the Olympics yet because it's more than a year away. They don't book out that far. So there's a lot of little challenges. Crazy for sure. Yeah, it is nuts. So let's let's talk about say say we're, you had mentioned before if you were starting f from scratch now you would do a few things differently. What if you were talking to someone who just has no concept of backups? Like what would you tell them to focus on? Well, my first question would be you know is it for professional use? Sorry, I cut my nose there. So, so you know it's I'm fixated on it. Uh, but um, so if it's if it's for personal use, you know having the whole Drobo setup that I have here is not the, the least expensive way to do it. And so if it's for personal use, I just tell people, look, back up onto an SSD or a passport drive or whatever and get that out of your house. And, you know, remember to do that every couple of months. You know, if it's just pictures of your kids and, you know, your family vacations, I'm not saying that those are not important because they are, but you don't have to make sure that redundancy is done every night. Um, so for personal use, it's, it's a little different. Again, I do recommend that you throw it on Dropbox or you know, on uh, Google Cloud or wherever it might be, um, or Amazon Cloud, uh, those kinds of things. But for professional use, um, I, you know, again, I talk about how quickly you're 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 getting those offsite, and and I, again, the Drobo solution makes it easy because I didn't like the fact that three, four, or six months would go by with me backing out. That's just not a good habit. Um, and so I do recommend, and it, like the A10N that I have is an eight bay system. So it's big. Not everybody needs that kind of capacity. So it might be like a 5N2, which is a five bay drive and less expensive. Um, but, you know, setting up one of those is great and setting up two and doing the remote sync is even better. Um, and again, as I mentioned before, I would recommend if you were starting from scratch to use some kind of a synchronization software so you could you know, make sure you're doing all your checksums and and just moving deltas. That would be the best thing to do. Um, but again, you know, it depends on budgets too. I mean, right now with with what's going on in the economy and what's going on with the lack of business for people, I'm sure as hell not going to recommend someone to go out and spend, you know, 10 grand on backup um, right now if you're not making money. Now, at the same time, if you're a professional photographer and you haven't been backing up, and uh, and you and you're doing well. Now is a good chance to now is a good time to actually set that all up, because you're not working. Might as well get it set up and working so that when we start shooting again, that process is in place. So yeah. Right. And uh, yeah, having a having a relative who will hold a hold a, a, a NAS for you is probably very helpful as well. Yeah, I, I had it at a friend's house before. That was the one that was close to here. Mm -hmm. it, you know, it, it's it's a lot. Uh, I mean, you know, it's sucking a lot of power, and it is it is using bandwidth. But the nice thing is, again, the reason I've set mine at eleven o'clock is I know my brother usually is asleep by ten ten thirty. So I could say now that it, I have fiber, I could set it for one in the morning or two in the morning. It's so fast. But um, you know, it is using a little bit of their bandwidth. Although I don't know if they ever noticed that. Um, and it is using some of the power. I told my brother, I go, look, if you want me to pay for the power usage, and he's like, nah, don't worry about it. But I mean, it is nice to have that option. Um, but it could be anywhere. I mean, I could take that that drive and move it to Hawaii or, you know, Europe. The nice thing is it is nice to, that it's within a couple hours drive from here. So if I needed to, I can go up there and grab it for any reason. Yeah. Um... I was going to ask you about any stories of backup failures that you had, but you said you've never lost an image, and we'll knock on wood for that. Um, yep. any, any, like, don'ts? Like, um, I know personally, um, for a while, I was just relying on Time Machine in, in Apple, and it's just I would recommend people not do that. Don't rely on Time Machine. It's uh, I don't find it very reliable. Uh, I've lost images because I thought they were in a Time Machine backup, and they weren't. Um, any, other, any other, like, don'ts yep. that you've heard of or, or horror stories? Well, so, yeah, let's talk about Time Machine for a second for those people who are using Macs. And I love my Mac. Um, uh, I use Time Machine. So my uh, Drobo 8D that's over here is partitioned. as a 120 terabyte partition, 128 terabytes. And I've got a smaller partition. I think it's only five terabytes. And 
what I do is I run my time machine just to the smaller partition. And, but the time machine that I'm running to it is only backing up what's on my SSD, the internal SSD on the um, Mac, which is OS and apps. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Uh, so really um, all the data, all my photos, music, everything else is not on that drive. So it's only backing up OS and apps. Um, as far as don'ts, um, don't do, go on a photo tour with just your internal hard drive of your computer. Don't go on a photo tour, even with just one backup drive. I mean, well, as long as you have a large enough hard drive where you can have the data in two places, that's great. Or if you're not gonna format your memory cards and you wanna take them home, at least that's also some redundancy. But um, like I said, I'm pretty anal. I have, I like to have all my images in three places. Uh, if I'm going somewhere, especially if it's like a once in a lifetime trip for people to go to Tanzania on safari, um, it's nice to have more than one backup. We had one person uh, who went on our first trip to Tanzania and she had backed up. She was actually using an external hard drive as her main drive. And I said to her, do you have the images anywhere else? And she says, no. I said, well, let's put those on my SSD. So I backed them up for her on mine just to have another spot. And literally on the flight home, her hard drive completely crashed. I'm not talking like, I mean, it was catastrophic. Even the company couldn't recover. And so, yeah, you can send it to drive savers and they're going to charge you a couple grand to maybe recover it. And a lot of times it doesn't work very well. So I had everything backed up, thank God, on my SSD. So I was able to, you know, get her those files back. But redundancy is really critical. And again, if you're a professional photographer or if you're charging for your work in any way, to me, one of my selling, selling points to my client is I have redundant cameras, I have redundant lenses. I don't just take a flash with me to an event. I have like six flashes that go with me. Um, I have a backup photographer. So God forbid I get sick or something happens, I can try to find someone to, you know, I've got a pool of people I know that can step in. And then that same redundancy, I tell people about my backup solution with Drobo, not because they want to know the technicalities, but it shows them that I take my job seriously and that I am not your typical photographer who just says, oh yeah, I'll, I'll keep them for six months and then never have them again for you. I want to, I want to set myself apart from my competition. And this is one of my selling points is that, you know, if you contact me and I had a guy who ordered images from 14 years ago, like his daughter had a bot mitzvah, she's 27. And he goes, you know what? We never got our images. Can we get them? I'm like, sure. No problem. And again, I found them in seconds and just started working on them. Now they weren't as good as what I like to shoot now because the quality, I didn't, I wasn't as good a photographer back then, but, um, but you know, I had them. Very cool. So let me um, open it up to questions. I know people have been asking questions in the live chat, but okay. if anyone has any more questions, I haven't seen any lately. Let me make sure I'm not getting, missing a scroll. No, nothing. Um, oh, Jeff did comment that he uses Backblaze um, for years. He says, set it and forget it. So that's, uh, I've heard of that too. I've heard good things about that. I've heard of that too. Um, I've I, I did look into this before I was using the Drobos. I looked into Backblaze and uh, some of the other, you know, Amazon Cloud, uh, stuff like that, to like, what are ways that I could back up my data? There are two things that I found. One is the cost, the monthly cost was high for the amount of data that I want to store. So remember, I have every image from 1995. So um, it's a lot of data. So the monthly cost was pretty prohibitive. And um, the other thing is, a lot of the services I looked into, if you have a catastrophic data loss, it was, then they could get you your images back. Like they'd send you a drive or whatever. But if I want to poke in and just get a folder or one event, that wasn't something that they supported a lot of them. So um, that was a couple of problems. The other problem was at the time I was only moving 10, 10 megabits per second or 10, uh, 10 megabytes per second up. So uh, you know, to back up what I shoot every week would have taken way too long. And so for all those reasons, I, I didn't use it. And then when Drobo, uh, when I found out about the Drobo solution, I thought, great, I don't have any monthly costs. I have the initial cost of the box and the drives that go in, but then I don't have to worry about it because it's my own system. They reside within my own personal domain, my brother's house in here. I don't have to worry about data loss or someone else getting to my data or all those things. So, so I actually prefer being a bit of a control freak. I like having my own stuff. 
Yeah, I mean, that's that's one thing I've noticed. Like, you are one of the most pragmatic, uh, detail-oriented people. You're detail-oriented, but everything is focused on actually getting things done, and that's what, that's one of the things I, I love hearing about, uh, why, why I love hearing about your workflow and your processes. Well, you know, workflow is money. I mean, you know, let's, let's face it that when you're efficient at what you do, that means you can you can make more money and and so you know, and honestly it's funny because photo mechanic was the it was one of the biggest time savers i've ever had because again i like to turn the images around super fast for my clients but also things like the olympics where i where i have a 15 minute deadline to get everything back to the team every second counts so you know it's it's everything from the hardware so i like i said i'm using the new macbook pro 16 inch it's fast works really well. I'm using your software, Photo Mechanic and Photoshop. I also have the Wacom tablet here that I use for all my retouching because it saves a lot of time. Everything I do is optimized around efficiency, whether it's capturing fast, fast in the right Canon cameras, using the right memory cards, the right readers, the right computer, the right software, the right backup stuff. Every bit of that flows so well that it allows me to, I mean, because the goal is I want to shoot, post everything Sunday by noon, and then spend time with the family. That's the goal. Or answer emails. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, um, that, I think we're going to start wrapping it up here. I don't see any additional questions. Um, David also has If they do, if anybody has questions, they can email me. They can just reach me at jeff at jeffcable.com. Like I said, they can check out the blog because I tend on the blog. I tend to post, you know, I did right now. There's a review of the Canon 1DX Mark III, um, but I, you know, at times I'll post images of what I shot and I and I'll put settings and how I shot them and how, you know what I was thinking when I took them, stuff like that. So I try to share. There's really no question that people can ask me that I won't answer. I'm not one of those people that says, "Gee, you know, that's my secret sauce." So, um, and and I got free time right now, so. Ping me away. <laughs> yeah, I, as I said, I highly re recommend Jeff's blog. It's a very entertaining and uh, uh, educational read. Um, definitely check Thank him you. out Jeff, jeffcable.com or blog.jeffcable.com. Right. All right, then. Well, thank you very, very much for taking the time to hang out with us here on this afternoon. Um, we'll, we'll be trying to keep Workflow Wednesday live uh, going. We'll probably have something next Wednesday. I'm not sure what it might be, but I believe it should be a workfolio review going through uh, – someone's uh, workflow and, and Andrew, I believe, is going to um, troubleshoot and, and comment and, and suggest things. Um, also, I wanted to remind folks that we are um, working on releasing an update to Photo Mechanic 6. Now, this is not plus that brings back the spotlight search for, for Mac users. This has been a very popular uh, feature that we had to remove for PM6 and people were not happy about it. and. Um, it was not straightforward to bring it back, but we are bringing that back with a, a new build that should be released later this week. And when we do release that build, we are going to put upgrades from uh, previous versions to Photo Mechanic 6 on sale. So uh, keep an eye out for that. Check out our blog or our social media. Um, when, when we release that, we will make upgrades to Photo Mechanic 6 uh, on the sale price. So that's going to be good for folks who are... Um, who have waited they want they needed that spotlight search feature so uh, keep an eye out for that um and i think that's hey, about it can we, can we uh can we do one shout out to all the people that are out there that are working like you they're going to the office but <laughs> all the people that are out there that um are home right now that or people who aren't home right now that are that are working just a shout out to everybody to, to stay healthy and keep smiling we'll make it through all this but um again all those people that are out there, all the first responders, my brother-in-law is a firefighter down in San Diego, the school teachers that are working from home, all those people. I mean, um, I think, you know, now's the time to, to appreciate all, all of them. And, and, you know, yeah, it's tough for us photographers, you, you know, but it's a hell of a lot tougher for them. So 100%. Um, I mean, it's, it's a little bit ironic that being isolated is making us appreciate the connections that we have and, you know, I, I know that yeah, I mean, I'm reaching, I'm reaching out to people I haven't talked to in a long time. I'm doing uh, I'm doing Zoom uh, video conferences with followers who want me to look at their website. I'm like, anybody wants me to critique their website, to send me an email. I'm doing it for free just to help out, and it's fun. Yeah, you know, it's fun to meet new people, and and so it's weird. Someone said the other day I was watching uh, I think um, 
James Corbin, I don't remember who it was, who said it shouldn't be called social distancing. It should be called phys physical distancing because right now we're actually more social in many ways than we were before. People are talking more. You see people walking out in, on the street or riding bikes, you know, keeping their distance. But people are social. And I think now's a good time to you know, even be more social than we were before. Totally agree. And uh, thanks for that putting that positive spin on it. I, uh, I can forget to do that. So it's good that we're doing that. I really appreciate that. I appreciate you, Jeff. And I appreciate everyone who um, asked comments or comments, uh, questions in the chat. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're so glad you're here and keep, um, uh, yeah, keep, keep on keeping on and we'll, uh, we'll see you guys next week and you can contact Jeff, contact us anytime you want. Thanks a lot, sir. See ya. See ya. Goodbye, everybody.